everyone, welcome to That Guy Reviews. This is a two part of the EMF video series that I'm putting together. And if you haven't seen the first video yet, make sure you check it out. And here's the link. Now I would suggest you check it out, you know, if you need a quick intro to what EMF is, and it'll help you understand its risk. Now in this video, we'll review a really good EMF tester, which is the Trifield EMF meter model TF2. We'll also take a look at the EMF radiation neutralizer and see what that's really about and see if there's any difference in a reading when it's applied to a device. The Trifield EMF reader model TF2 was actually recommended to me uh, by a manufacturer that produces many products that gives off radiation such as a sauna. And uh, you can do your own research, but the Trifield has a lot of positive reviews online. And I know that there are many cheap 10 to $20 EMF readers on Amazon. You'll get some wild inaccurate readings with the lower end devices, which is why it's so cheap. As far as the EMF neutralizer goes, it's not supposed to eliminate the EMF completely. You know, otherwise your device would not work. It's a homeopathy frequency infused uh, with objects to help harmonize the bad frequency. I looked at the back of this just really quick and it tells you right off the bat that, here I'll bring it in, it tells you right there that it will not change the EMF re readings. We will also test the EMF exposure for some of the most common devices found in a home and see how much EMF is radiating from them. With the Trifield EMF meter, uh, we'll be conducting the readings and use the EMF neutralizer which is uh, supposed to neutralize the damaging effects. Uh, EMF will have on our bodies. Now all the products that are used in this video uh, will be listed in the video description below. So if you're interested, make sure you check that out. Now before we proceed with the readings, let me quickly go over the features of the EMF meter and also the EMF neutralizer. Since you've gotten this far, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And also visit thatguyreviews.com for the latest product reviews and DIY articles. Now back to the program. The Trifield EMF meter, a model TF2, costs about 100. It cost me about 168 dollars. It came with free shipping from Amazon. I didn't have the instructions with me. I must have misplaced them. But it comes with an instruction. Uh, gives you, you know, all the the safety readings and you know what to expect uh, with certain devices and how to use the device. Uh, there are several options here. Uh, you have standard, which is for frequencies between 40 and 100 hertz. Uh, weighted is for um, anything that has uh, frequencies over 60 hertz. Now, the thought is the higher the frequency, the worse off it is for your uh, body to be exposed to. And then you have magnetic field standard or weight and weighted magnetic uh, field readings. Now, magnetic fields are for um, power lines, appliance wiring, such as refrigerator, uh, printers, uh, food processors, uh, coffee machines, clocks, garbage disposals, uh, sewing machine, toasters, and so forth. So just right off the bat, you, from what you're hearing there, that list consists of a lot of things that you guys um, engage with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and then you have electric fields, electrical fields. Electrical fields are for um, things such as the wall outlets, uh, maybe the flu fluorescent lights in your home. And then uh, RF. Uh, which most of us are probably exposed to the most is um, you know all the frequency that you're getting from uh, the microwave uh, the cell phone cell phone towers uh, radio and TV and, and and so forth so RF is a little bit different you as we kind of um, start to conduct the test you'll start to notice that um, the readings are going to start to pulsate which is different than uh, the, the magnetic and electrical because uh, those are more steady and RF, you know, it pulsates up and down, so you're going to get different readings. So let me just quickly turn this on. You can see that there's a peak right here, the peak option. Once the reading hits a certain number, it's going to tell you that, you know, that's the highest um, within that duration. So since we've been holding this, you notice that it's 0.3. That's uh, the highest rating uh, that it's hit since it's been turned on. At 0.1, that's considered relatively safe. So let me go ahead and, and uh, move into electrical real quick just to see the type of readings. And you notice that everything is measured a little bit differently. 
So for mag for magnetic testing, everything's uh, measured in milligauss. And then for electrical field, uh, it's measured in volts per meter, which is what the VM stands for. And for RF, which is radio frequency, uh, it's measured in uh, our wave field strength. It's currently reading at 2.7, 2.8, the peak at 5.9. And uh, to be honest, that's not really safe, right? You have to be 0.2. 0.2 is what's considered safe based on what Trifield had listed. Um, and we're beyond that at this point with the peak of 1.0. We're at 6.2. So it's a ton of radiation around here right now in the studio. We have the, um, the studio lights and then you have the, the cell phone um, all here. So it gives you a good idea of what you're dealing with and how much you're exposed to. And the last thing that you probably noticed already is that there's a battery indicator in the upper right hand corner. Let me take a look at the back. There's a battery compartment, it takes the 9 volt. And there's a, um, I believe that's a brightness button, and then you have sound indicator. So let me see what happens when I press on those. I'm going to press on the first one, which is the... All right, so I have to quickly dim the lights just to show you that, that the uh, button here actually turns on the light on the screen. It lights up the screen. Let's see. There you go. Do that again. Okay. And then back here is the sound, I believe, if it hits beyond the safe point. It'll start beeping like you hear it now, which is not good. So the further I pull it away, you can hear less of the sound. The sound will go off if the um, the, the readings are really high uh, beyond the safe zone. All right, now that that's out the way, let me just put this back in its box. Let's check out the EMF neutralizer stickers to see uh, what that's about. Now, I was actually looking into this and I stumbled across this on Amazon and it had a lot of good ratings. Um, it wasn't cheap, to be honest with you. I think for 20 of them, it cost me about 70 bucks. Uh, let's take a look at what it comes with and what it says here. So this is apparently a created by a doctor. And you can see the image here that you know, you're putting your cell phone next to uh, your ear. It's affecting the brain somehow. And then it recommends that you would put two on the back of the phone, four on the back of the microwave, five at the bottom of a laptop, one on each side of the router, two for each hair appliance and so forth. Um, and what's interesting is now here are some stats. It says doctors are now aware of breast tumors related to where cell phones are placed. And then cell phone for more than four hours per day reduces the sperm count by 25%. Using cell phone for more than two minutes affects the DNA of the brain for over an hour after use. So there's a lot going on there. Um, it gives you a lot of stats here. Uh, once you start using it, it's supposed to improve sleep, calms your nerve, um, and then all, all the other stuff that's listed on here. Now, the one thing that's interesting, is says that these EMF neutralizer will not change the EMF meter, meter uh, readouts. And, you know, it, it sort of makes sense, right? Because if you, if you do block it out completely, uh, the devices may not work anymore. So what we'll do is, you know, we'll try that and then we'll do the readings to see if it has any impact um, and uh, go from there. And these stickers are easy to use. You take them off the sheet here and apply them to any device that you want to neutralize EMF with. We'll be testing the EMF exposure for some of the most common devices found in a home and see how um, how much EMF is radiating from them. I'll be using the Trifield EMF meter uh, to conduct the readings and, and then I'll be using the EMF neutralizer stickers which is supposed to neutralize the damage effects uh, EMF have on our bodies. All right guys, so here's the reading right now in front of the uh, router. We're looking at 0.9, we got about one point four sort of safe zone was point two so it's still a little high let me go ahead and try to add these stickers on here to see if the emf neutralizer is going to help
Okay, now that it's on, let's give it a chance to reset. And now, the readings are looking a lot better. It's at 0.3. It goes back up to 2, but 0.4. These are pulsating uh, signals. So we'll see what the peak goes up to. Still a lot better readings than what we had prior to the um, stickers are not being on there. It took about, what, four feet to be within a safe zone. With these stickers, are within two feet, which is pretty reasonable in my opinion. So let's move on to the next one. All right, guys, so I'm gonna now test out the television. Uh, and uh, let's see here, bring this up close here. You guys probably can't see. I mean, this is a about 48 inch TV. Up close, it's at 0.2 milliwatt which is relatively safe so as I pull away it gets less and less so when you're standing about this far I mean it's 0.1 so I don't think you'll be watching TV uh, that close or about a feet out feet out so I think it's kind of pointless to test the TV for now uh, let's go ahead and move on to the laptop all right, guys, so we're going to try testing out the laptop, and it looks like we're getting about 1.1 peaks around 2.0, and uh, that's what we're getting right now with the laptop. I'm going to go ahead and put on the stickers. Based on the instructions here, it says uh, you're putting about five on the bottom of the laptop. I don't think I'm going to use all five just because I'm trying to use them sparingly, but I'll put four, one on each corner, and see if that makes any difference. So you want to kind of reduce some of that uh, radiation and put one on each corner. Okay. So we're getting about 0.8, peaking at 1.8, so it does make some difference. All right, so here we have the cell phone. This is what everyone uses nowadays, so let's see what kind of readings we get from it. I should turn on YouTube just so that we have some sort of signal going out. And we're getting about 2 point something and peaking at 4 point. Now it's going to 5.8. It's pulsating. So it looks like towards the bottom here is where we're getting a lot of the signal. So let me go ahead and put one sticker on the back of this and see what kind of uh, results we get from it. All right, now that the sticker's on there, let's check out the readings. All right, so we're getting a belt. Let's see here, let me adjust this so you guys can see. 0.9, one point. This is where the higher reading was towards the bottom of the phone. And now we're getting about 0 0.9, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Getting about 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Let me go around the phone. I mean, you know, it's still outside of the safe zone, but it seems like there is some improvements using these EMF neutralizer. Based on what I've read so far in uh, TriField's recommendation, um, the field measurement should read less than 0.2 milliwatts. 
Uh, so we're going to go ahead and see what the Xbox is going to give us, what's radiating out of the Xbox uh, with it powered on. So it's 0 0.04. It's peaking at 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So that's really low. So I just thought I'd share this with you. Let's uh, see what other readings we get. Just kind of wait around. And the number fluctuates because it's pulsating, and that's what we, we typically get when um, you're dealing with uh, radio frequency. And that's with you with the meter being almost extremely close to the unit, right? It's about one inch. So if I pull it further out, which where you guys would you guys would probably be playing about five ten feet out. So it, it's really safe. So that's good news. So let me move on to the Oculus. It is a virtual reality headset uh, that I picked up recently, and I'm kind of curious to see what kind of uh, signals coming out of that as well, since it's going to be in closer proximity than um, the Xbox uh, Series X to your body. So let's see uh, what the readings are for that. All right, so we have the Oculus Quest 2. Uh, it's going to be a little tricky trying to test this just because it powers off immediately once you you know you're not connected to the headset so i'm going to press the the face piece so that way it assumes that um it's connected to a person's face so let me go ahead and do that real quick there it goes the power's on let me just press n as if my face were there and let's check out the ratings you know about 0 0.3 0 0.2 0.4 0.5 it seems a lot of the radiation is coming from the right side of the headset. So let me go ahead and apply these EMF uh, radiation neutralizer stickers to see if that helps a little bit. Okay. Let me just continue to hold that really quick. Let's give this a shot and see what we get now. So it's 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, and it just shut off. Let me go ahead and try to turn it back on by pressing it. 0 0.3, 0 0.5, So it's relatively low. I mean, it's not like it's off the charts, which is great. I'm going to keep these uh, EMF stickers on here. I know it looks kind of funky, but, you know, it keeps me uh, feeling a little bit much safer um, knowing that it's there. It's peace of mind, I guess. But that's the readings that we're getting for the Oculus Quest 2. So as I said before, you know, I am not a health professional, nor am I a expert in the field of EMF. Um, but from what I've known, you know, you, you can basically look online and see where the danger readings zones are and then um, test the, the ratings to see what you're getting. And then I've found out about these EMF uh, neutralizing stickers and uh, they seem to be working based on all the tests that I've done so far. Um, I know that in the back of the EMF readers, it says it's not going to impact the the readings, but it, it seems to be doing so, which I think is a good sign. So guys, there you have it. I have uh, both of these uh, tested out and in my review. I personally think the meter is awesome. Um, it's worth getting if that's something that you're really concerned about and curious about what kind of readings you're getting for um, EMF in your home. And these neutralizing stickers... Uh, you know, I have to use it some more to be able to see if there's any real impact to my day-to-day -day life, uh, if there's anything that's noticeable. But as of right now, based on the readings, I mean, I see that the uh, readings uh, for the EMF has been reduced, at least to some extent. And uh, I'm going to start using this uh, throughout my house. And uh, I mean, I'll let you guys know if anything bad came out of it or, or, or anything like that. But I think these are, are, are worth getting or trying. Um, and I, I provided the link below. Here's a quick recap. The recommended safe readings per tri-field is standard magnetic should be less than 
weighted magnetic should be less than 5.0, and for electric standard and weighted, it should be less than 50 volts per meter. If the reading on a metal, such as a refrigerated door, is beyond 50 volts per meter, then it may be shock hazard, and grounding should be checked for safety. As for RF, since it pulsates, it's difficult to get a steady reading, and you can look at the peak number, though it's going to be much higher. As long as it's below 1.0, then it should be safe. So how much EMF exposure is safe? Well, it's hard to say since there's no conclusive heart number out there. It's just best to reduce where possible. Having knowledge of what EMF is and the dangers can help you become more proactive on managing your health better. Here are the notes from the Trifield website and guide. Magnetic and RF are the two types that we should be testing for at home. If testing magnetic fields, make sure that you use the weighted mode so that it can produce readings that will likely affect the human body. Here are the two tips. When conducting your readings, make sure that you're being practical. Only test areas where you'll be spending time like your living room and not the electrical closet. Keeping a good distance from technologies that emit EMF is a good neutralizer. Typically four to six feet is a good practice. If you cannot, then there are other ways to reduce exposure for like the cell phone. See my other videos for more tips. For testing, we have to be mindful that this was a quick test. It was by no means comprehensive. The results may be impacted by how the device such as a cell phone was reacting at the time of the test and how the meter was positioned. All of the readings were done very close and mainly testing radio frequency. The testing was subjected to how many EMF neutralizer was available. I could only put on each device what I had. So the results could have been better if I had put the recommended amount on the devices. While conducting the readings, I tried to reduce anything that could skew the readings by keeping the EMF emitting devices far away from the EMF meter. Lastly, here are the test results from the six tech devices used during this video. My final thoughts are that no matter what, we should do our best to reduce EMF exposure. I did not expect the EMF neutralizer to change the EMF readings based on the manufacturer notes, but it did and did so in a good way. Personally, I'll be looking to buy more of these EMF neutralizers and look out for other EMF neutralizers and blockers out in the market. So this concludes our EMF2 video series. Hopefully this brought some light to the subject and I think I've said enough already in the videos. So feel free to drop a comment below on your thoughts and hopefully we can come together as a community and share and learn from each other. And before we end this video, please make sure you like and subscribe and also visit thatguyreviews.com so that we can bring you more content like this in the future. Until next time, I'll see you then.